In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. The prophet Isaiah said to the people of Israel, the oppressed people of Israel, I will do a new thing for you. I will do a new thing for you, which will give you new life, new, new direction, a new purpose. And the psalmist said in reflection, the Lord has done great things for you. The Lord has done great things for us. And in Paul's epistle to the Philippians, Paul tells that story about how, what a uh, fanatic Jew he was, and uh, what a, an amazing Jew he was, and he changed because God did something great for him, something new for him, so that he came to ground his entire identity in Jesus Christ. That's how he now saw himself, in Christ. The message in our lection today is this. God is going to do a great thing for you. Are we ready? Are we ready? And if we go to the gospel reading, there's another hint the great thing that God is going to do for us is to come and be with us through our corporate worship next Sunday through Easter Day. So we need to be here. We need to be here every single day. I mean, look at that reading from the Gospel of John. It's about Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha are two of my, two of my favorite Bible characters. Um, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, yes, yes, we call our two cats Mary and Martha. <laughs> but let me tell you the story about this, just sort of a little high note here. So, you know, we got, we got alpacas about three years ago, four years ago. That meant we had to get bales of hay to put in the alpaca shed. That meant we had to get, that, that means that we would get mice, and that means we had to get some barn cats. And so my wife Joanne met a cat lady from Catlet. <laughs> and the lady said uh, she, had, she had some cats because she took in stray cats. And uh, she, in fact, had two kittens from this feral cat. And um, she thought they were pretty good. And so we went the next day to go see. And sure enough, there were these two beautiful black kittens, sisters from the letter, same litter. And uh, we said, we'll take them. And um, I said, by the way, what are their names? She said, well, Inky and Blinky. <laughs> uh, right there, I didn't know whether we were going to stick with those names or not. <laughs> so on the way home, you know, we were excited. And we, we, after two days, we knew these cats, these cats, these kittens were really going to fit into our lifestyle. I said, Joanne, what do you think we ought to call those? I, he said, not Inky and Blinky. She said, what about Mary and Martha? I said, fantastic, because one of them actually was very cuddly and really liked to be held and was just, you know, right there with you. And the other one was exploring, even as a kitten, exploring out in the grass and, you know, um, just doing his own, her own thing. So we called them Mary and Martha, and, and, um, and then a funny thing happened. About a year later, Martha started being a lot like Mary, and Mary started being a lot like Martha. So Martha now was the cuddly one as well as the explorer, and now Mary was the explorer as well as the cuddly person. Somebody did a great thing for those two cats. <laughs> they sort of lived into a new identity of who they were. So let me bring us back to the gospel, which is really what we're talking about here today. And this interesting passage that really does name critical points about next week. It's almost like a preview. Get ready, folks. This is what's coming. And really get ready. 
so that we can enter into the spirit of the message of these liturgies which we share together so that we can feel God in a new way. You know, that's really what the spiritual journey is about, feeling God in a new and a new and a new way that never ends. There's always some sort of surprise waiting for us, always some door, some window opening so that we know God in a new way, that we know Jesus Christ in a new way. And the best time, the best time, Okay, Ben, it's like the finals. It's like the finals, isn't it? It is. It's like the finals. And, you know, it, the best time is Holy Week. But let's take a look at what we just heard in this gospel. Number one, Lazarus was there. It was Lazarus' home. Mary and Martha lived there, too. They lived together. And Lazarus is the one, of course, who was raised from the dead, resuscitated. So that's God is thinking right there about Jesus, right? And Martha was there. And Martha and Mary pop up several times in Scripture, but this time with Martha, it's simply Martha served. Um, you know, the thing I like about Martha is that um, she did serve. I mean, sometimes she griped about it because Mary got more attention than Martha did. But she did the, she did the work. That's, that's really important. And in many, for many people, this whole combination of Mary and Martha is really about ministry and contemplation. I mean, Martha is a ministry person. The poor need to be fed. Let's do it. We need to take care of some people who are homeless. Let's do it. We need to care for some parishioners who are not doing very well. Let's do it. Let's get active. Let's do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's who Martha is. So Martha is there serving a meal. And that's going to happen during Holy Week. It'll be a Passover or it'll be a special meal. A meal at which Jesus fed bread and wine and other things to his followers, to his disciples. So that's coming, a meal. And at, in this gospel reading, Mary, Mary. And when we think of Mary, often people, whereas Martha is more about ministry, Mary is more about contemplation, contemplative prayer. The one who could be still with Jesus, to be in the presence of God and really not having to say anything, but to really be there. And so in the story today, Mary is there, and she had this special perfume, this ointment. She poured on Jesus' feet. In a way, it's, if it had been on his head, it would have been an anointing, like, the king of the Jews. It's on his feet. It's more like preparing him for burial. Again, preparing us for a good Friday. But it was certainly honoring this person, Jesus, in a very special, significant way. And yes, Judas was there as well. Another character. Another character in this Garden of Gethsemane story, this crucifixion story. Portrayed as not a good person. The hard thing for us, however, is that Judas was one of the twelve. He was called by Jesus to follow. And in one way, we could identify with him as well, not as betraying Jesus, but maybe as saying we would like to follow, but then falling away. There are times when we probably would identify with him as well. So throughout all of that we've heard today and that we're hearing and that we are honoring and that we're living with, it's telling us, here are some things that are going to happen. So come. Come and celebrate with us that triumphant entry. Let's feel it. 
come during the, during the week. Do your own thing or come here during the week. On Thursday, let's, let's have a feast together with communion and the washing of feet. Let's get to know each other as Jesus got to know those disciples. Let's honor each other as Jesus honored those disciples, of which we are also. On Friday, let's be here. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Yes, let's be here. We may even cry. We may even be made and just want to sit for a while. Let's be here Saturday night when for the first time we celebrate and we say Christ is risen. We get to say double hallelujahs. We get to really be joyful and do it again full blown on Sunday. I'm telling you, it's important for each one of us to come and maybe bring somebody because there is no time, no other eight days in the year that are as important as this. I believe it's your obligation to come. We can't tell you what to do, but it is so important. Another way to say it is, why don't you treat yourself and be here during Holy Week and believe that God is going to do something new for you, you, you. I'm